I have played over 100 hours of Alluvium Zero when I tell you exactly what to look for when you're going for your next land purchase, you're swapping up your land or whatever you might be doing. I'll be going through all the tiers, the different kinds of blueprints you can obtain and what might be the best choice for you personally as you're starting your Alluvium journey, okay? Even those of you that aren't going to buy land, you might really want to know this video for in the future when you might be trying to sell your land or seeing if you get a premium value for it because they are not built equal. And after 100 hours, I can tell you that for certainty, there are some that are just objectively better than others in so many different ways. The first thing we'll quickly discuss is the blueprints. So here we have it here is the rarity table that we currently have. Now, this is obviously subject to change. It could also, it could all change at a moment's notice, okay? But this is currently what sort of alluvials are going to appear on your land um, for when you're going to get those uh, biodata scans, then you've researched blueprints and you think you sell the skins to other players of those different alluvials. Now, there are some obvious advantages and disadvantages to each of them. The first thing is, the popular alluvials will be good to have. So anything with high water for the Atlas, which is kind of like the Pikachu of alluvium, is obviously going to be quite strong to many people. The other side of things is that a lot of the fire alluvials are quite good. You've got things like Seer, Scoriox, and Ramfire. They're all quite popular. So for your fire synergies, you're going to be looking at Crimson Waste. Your other side of things is Earth is just an insanely good affinity in the game. I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Your earth synergies for things like your Titanor and your even your sea forest is not too bad because it has granite. You've got your Shard Bluff Labyrinth. So those three should definitely be on your radar. I will say that Abyssal Base and Brightless Steps and Tiger Boreal are my three favorites visually. That's kind of ironic that they're on the other side of things. Anyways, the last thing you should consider is Crystal Shores has a really diverse range of alluvials. If you like just doing a lucky dip, this one's going to be really good. And I think from my experience, it might even give you a higher chance at just pulling things in general. For example, we don't know exactly how it works, but there's definitely going to be this scenario where if you say you get an Atlas and Atlas is your highest chance to get, you've got an 80% chance to find an Atlas and maybe a 50% chance to find an Elfie. I don't know what it is. Anyways, let's say Atlas is your highest chance. Let's say you get that bio data. Now, since you can't get that bio data again, you've got a really low chance of getting your next biodata. Whereas if you're on something like Crystal Shores, you might have a bunch of tier one alluvials with very similar weightings. You can get them all pretty frequently. It might be harder to find the stage twos and the stage threes, but you're definitely going to be getting more biodata overall if that's how the system works. Obviously, this is all subject to change, but those are the sorts of things you need to consider when you're going for blueprints. Now, more importantly, where should your element sites be placed on your tier of land okay so we're looking at the alluvial master site for this because i can see lots of different land plots it'll be a bit easier for me to manage a tier one plot has three element sites and one fuel site for example this one has two carbon i might be able to zoom in a bit there we go this one has two carbon often different corners the fuel site is the solon trench and another silicon in the bottom left hand corner this plot sucks okay do not buy this plot now we're not going to be looking at region for this I'm talking strictly the elements, the fuels, and the tier, okay? This plot is really bad. What I have found is on the lower tiers, tier one and tier two, you actually want everything to be clumped up together. This differs from tier three and tier four, and I'll show you examples of them soon. But in this case, you definitely want the two carbons together, but more importantly, you want all four of these in the same block. And why is that? That's because tier one plots benefit the most, by far, from power plants. Okay, I've learned this the hard way. My tier one plot could have been done way faster if I followed this. The closer up you can bunch everything, the more you can spam power plants. When they're giving the debuffs for each other, for example, lots of carbon converters next to each other, then it kind of gets offset really quickly by the power plant. You don't want to have to put four power plants next to each converter. You want to put four power plants next to both of them and it will offset it by far. This doesn't work as well as on T3 on T4. You don't need it as much, but it doesn't work as well. But on T1s, it is absolutely mandatory. So if we're looking for a plot with much better things, you also want equal distribution, by the way, one of each fuel site, uh, uh, not each fuel site, <laughs> each element site for sure. But if we try to look for one that's really clumped, this one's not bad because they're all set on the right hand side of the, of the screen, which gives you lots of place for your singularity scanners along the left. And you've also got these three, which is quite close to each other. 
This one is actually really cool. The lack of diversity hurts a little bit, but your converters, your carbon converters are going to kill it. <laughs> um, and that actually also pairs up with uh, Solon. No, it doesn't. You need silicon. My bad. Anyways, so let's look for another one that would be really good. This is one that I would really like to see. It's got the Hyperion and the three really close. You've got this entire L shape, right? In this corner here, in the, the top left to the bottom right in the L shape where you're getting some really good other buildings into your land, okay? So the other thing you wanna look for for a tier one is I'd really look for a Krypton, okay? Krypton is really valuable because it's used to get the Nexus from I think four to five and every point onwards. So if you're rushing down Singularity Scanners, you're rushing down extra upgrades for things, your Nexus needs to get up. You get, you get a little bit slowed down by the engineering workshop, but at least you can build up those materials while the Nexus is upgrading. So Krypton is definitely a bigger priority on tier one than it is on the other different tiers. The other different tiers are a little bit, you can do kind of whatever, because they have three fuel sites, it's not nearly as bad. So if we start to look at tier twos and what you might be looking for, we can just filter it right here. There we go. Um, I still really want to see things clumped up. Like look at this one. This I would actually really love. Like you can see, you can already see the spots you would start putting the power plants and all the rest of it. This is the sort of plot I wish I had for a tier two plot. Now, there's not a whole lot of diversity, which hurts it a bit. You can see the three Solon trenches, um, but you also got two silicon and the silicon is actually used to create the Solon. So that's not a bad combo. Um, and you've got a lot of hydrogen pumps. I love hydrogen. <laughs> Somehow I find it more useful. Um, if we're looking for another one with lots of clumped up different stuff, You've got this one here, which isn't too bad. It leaves a whole half of the plot empty, which is really what you want on these tier twos. You can't get away with that on three or four. Even this one's pretty good, where it's got a really good diversity of, um, you've got the Hyperion and the Krypton, the green and the rainbow colored one. Um, they're both really, really great. I really like that plot as well. But really on the T1 and T2, you want them clumped up. It's gonna save you so much time. You have no idea. So the next thing we're going to look at is tier threes and tier fours. So on tier threes, you're not going to have that much freedom. Now, what you do want to try and get is you want to get things of the same kind as close together as you can, because that's going to make those converters that much better. Since power plants are less useful, you want to utilize all of your other adjacency bonuses way, way more. Okay. For example, if you've got a Hyperion uh, converter, when it's near a Hyperion fuel site, for example, a little rainbow colored one there, uh, right here, then that is what you will want for those adjacency bonuses. But you need those things to be close together. In this case, you've got a lot of Krypton that's pretty coupled and you've got a lot of carbon, the black one, that's really coupled as well. So this plot's actually pretty good with a little bit of space in the top right. If you can get a little bit of extra space, that's quite good. Um, this one here has a bit of clumping. I actually wouldn't want it to be overly clumped on your T3 and T4. You're actually looking for the opposite. I know that sounds crazy, but since power plants are way less effective, it's gonna be way harder for you to organize your plot if your different kinds of elements and fuels are really clumped together. Now, technically elements and fuels are mutually exclusive. Your fuel converters, from my experience, don't affect the element converters. So like a lot of silicon, which is an element, and a lot of krypton, which is a fuel, a lot of them bunched up in the same zone wouldn't actually be that bad. It's when you have a lot of silicon and carbon, which are both elements and they're clumped up together, that's when you will start to run into quite a few issues. So the other thing we look at is this one here has got a bit of clumping on the hydrogen, a little bit on the silicon, not too bad. The one Hyperion in the corner does definitely make a negative impact on this plot. And we'll quickly look at the T4 before we sign off on this one. Tiger Boreal, that looks sick. So this one's good because you've got a little bit of space you really can't get away with much on these T4s, okay? They're gonna be pretty random. That's just what you're gonna to have to deal with. On the T4, your focus should be diversity. In this case, you've got two, four, and three on the fuels, which is actually really great. Two, six, and four on the elements, which is not bad at all. So this would be quite a good plot. Five, two, two is not that good. Three, six, three is actually really good. So you're just looking for the plot to be as diverse as you possibly can and as spread out as you possibly can. Again, the opposite of the T1 and T2. This is something I wish I knew earlier. Um, obviously, many people believe Krypton is going to be more valuable in the long run since it's probably going to be the most used out of all the different um, uh, fuels. 
So a fuel landmark like Krypton is going to be quite good. The other thing you've got here is you've got the three carbon and two Hyperion at the top right next to each other. This is actually really good. So any element, any sites that are literally touching each other, like so many are on this plot, is going to be a really good thing because your power plants don't need to be as spread out to capture as many different buildings as possible. So this sort of stuff is quite good. The really, really tight clumps of the same elements or same fuels or a combination of elements and fuels that are the same of each type is going to be really good so i hope you guys learned something i hope you guys took away something from my 100 hours in alluvium zero have a good day guys